everyone and welcome to my channel, The Quiet Place, where we'll talk about faith, life, and perspective. My name is Cynthia and the topic on everybody's mind is the coronavirus or COVID-19. Should we as Christians be scared or should we just let it roll off our shoulders? That is what we're going to be covering in today's video. Stay tuned. So as many of you guys have probably already experienced as I have. You go to the supermarket and everything is empty. All the shelves are bare. There's no toilet paper. There's no hand sanitizer. There's no alcohol. Living in Florida, we have seasonal allergies. There is no allergy medicine, no cough medicine. There is absolutely nothing. And so do, are people really overreacting, exaggerating, or is there really something to this virus? As Christians, we need to ask ourselves, do I get worried? Do I go and start hoarding all the stuff? Or do I just trust that God will take control? Now this, there's no really right or wrong answer. This is really personal to everybody, but I'm just gonna be sharing some things about what I feel as Christians we should be doing and what the Bible tells us about fear. There are many different responses to fear. I have a friend who's scared of spiders and as soon as he sees money, he drops everything that's in his hand and he rushes out the door. There are people that have agoraphobia and that is the fear of being around others, being around a lot of people, being in a crowd. So these type of people will not be going to Disney, right? Which by the way is closed right now. We're not gonna get into that. There's people like myself who are scared of worms. Don't ask me why or how. I just, they think they're disgusting. I think they're needed for our environment, but I do not care to know, see, touch, or even know that there's a worm near me. Then there's other people who just freeze. They don't know what to do. They don't act. They just get stuck into this situation and they don't know how to get out. And a lot of people during this crisis, this virus, are in that freeze mode. They don't know how to get out. They start hoarding because everybody else is getting water, so I need to get water. Well, other people are taking toilet paper, so I need to get the toilet paper. And so we need to ask ourselves, where did fear originate? When we really look at the Bible, the first instance of fear is found in Genesis 3, verse 10, when Adam and Eve told God that they were scared or that they feared him. That's why they were hiding when he came in to walk with them in the garden. Now, it was normal for them to walk with God in the garden. This is something that they did every day. He was like their best friend. They would take strolls and have that communion, but some Something happened between the last time that God visited and this time and the difference is that after ate that fruit that forbidden fruit which was sin who entered the world is when they started having that fear we see in 2nd Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 that it says for God did not give us a spirit of timidity but a spirit of power not a spirit of fear but of love and of self-discipline or self-control and so are we gonna be hoarding are we gonna be going to the stores like lunatics and trying to get everything that we can I know for me when I personally went to Walmart I know that I had everything I needed I usually buy from BJ's or Sam's Club or Costco many of you guys may know it and so I buy in bulk anyway so I did have a lot of my materials but just going into Walmart going to Publix going into the different stores I did feel a little bit of anxiety just because all the shelves were bare everybody was getting everything there was carts full of like frozen dinners and people buying all kinds of meats there was no milk you know different uh, rations for different foods like the rice the milk the eggs the bread and everything is being rationed out and so I felt like I needed to go out and buy all this stuff when in reality I really didn't but this verse is talking to us and telling us that we don't need to fear fear doesn't come from God fear isn't something that we were born with I'm sure you guys have seen a little baby trying to walk for the first time they're not scared that they're gonna fall or you know a younger kid or a toddler who's going to touch the stove or touch an iron they're not scared because they don't know what the effects are of that. See, fear is a learned behavior and it's also used as a coping mechanism to deal with certain situations. We also see in John 14 verse 27 that it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. So in this verse, it's telling us that God is trying to give us peace, trying to give us understanding, not like the world gives it. And so the world is all in panic and we are all fearful, but that's not what God wants for us. That's not what he calls us to do. He wants us to give us, he wants to give us peace. He wants to give us that calm, that assurance, knowing that he is got us through this. He's, he's in control. And in that same verse, it's showing that it's not giving us peace like the world gives us, but how he gives it to us. We do need to use what God has given us. I don't want to be a foolish Christian um, saying that, there's you know nothing's going to happen everything is fine clearly something is happening people are dying unfortunately and this is having an effect on us and our world and so we need to be mindful that although we do believe in god and we do believe in his promises and we know that he has us we have to use those 
methods or those resources that he has given us. Just like when you don't want to get sick, everyone is coughing around you, everyone is sneezing, we know that we need to wash our hands. The recommended time is a 20 seconds singing happy birthday twice or the ABC song, but 20 seconds under the water with soap and water is the best solution. There are others that go for hand sanitizer and that is perfectly fine. Nowadays, there's even tons of YouTube videos trying to show you how to do your own hand sanitizer and that is great. But this is nothing new. Hygiene has always been something that is important. It's talked about in Leviticus. Different things that we need to keep up with should not be something new. This should be something that, oh, now I have to wash my hands. We needed to do it way before, guys. I mean, this is something that's not new. This is something that's already been done. And if we're practicing good hygiene, we should have already been doing that. We cannot just count on hand sanitizer for our cleanliness. In the same way, we need to be careful with spreading it to other people. Although I am a healthy individual and I feel great, I don't know if I could be a carrier and I can give it to someone else. I work with the elderly and so we are not allowed to go in or out of nursing homes. I am pretty practically working from home right now, but we have to be mindful and we have to be careful of other people who may have their defenses, their immune system down. And so am I going to go around and touching everything and, and, you know, talking and no, that's why we are in this process in this period of kind of quarantine, I guess you can say, or being careful how we greet each other. Instead of giving a kiss and a hug, which is so normal and natural for the Hispanic culture, we can't even shake hands. We have to say hi, or some people are, you know, giving high fives with their feet, or, you know, trying to figure out how to work in the society. But that doesn't mean that we need to be scared and totally isolate. In 1 John 4, 18, it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because this Bible verse tells us that God is love and God does not want us to fear. That is something that the enemy wants. We are, like I said, quarantined. We're isolating ourselves. We're kind of putting this physical barrier between us and other people. And so how are we gonna share the message? How are we gonna spread the word? How are we going to share with our brothers and sisters that love that Christ wants us to do? The enemy is behind our list. There is no doubt about it. We also find it in Luke 21 verse 11 where it talks about the pestilences. This is something that the Bible foretold way ahead of time. Now our normal nature is for us to be scared. Trust me, I was scared months ago. Not because of this coronavirus, but just because of the earthquakes and everything else that was going on. I prayed about it and I do have another video on fear and how to deal with that when the guy, what the Bible tells us about that. And I started reading verses and I started realizing that whether I am fearful or not, things are going to happen. Things are going to progress because you know what? This world is going from bad to worse. It's not going to get any better. And prophecy tells us that. The Bible clearly tells us that. Our goal is for us to try to get to heaven. It's supposed to be happening because, and, and I get excited. You know why? Because although people are scared and anxious, this tells me that God, that Jesus is one step closer to coming and getting me. Knowing that there is going to be an end to this world and I can finally live my eternal life with him and my family is what I look forward to. And so yes, the churches are being closed, but praise God because we have platforms like YouTube, like Facebook, like Instagram, where people are now going into social media, going into the internet, being outside of those four walls and actually sharing the faith, the message into this whole another population. You know, the message cannot be stopped. Satan is not going to stop God's mission, which is for us to share the word with others. And so there's even older people that are trying to figure out how to use their computers, how to use their phones, how to use their tablets for them to get connected with God in that way. And so we're going to have those small groups in our houses. There's probably not, not going to be church in your actual physical building, but you can have church with your family at home. You can have church through a Skype meeting or through FaceTime or through YouTube, like I said. People are wanting th this desire, this passion, this drive, this, this need to know what is going on and have answers. And the only way we can have answers is through the Bible because it tells us what happened, what is happening and what is going to happen. God does not want us to be scared. God does not want us to be afraid or anxious. God tells us what is going to happen and these are signs that his coming is very soon and so many people including pastors have prayed for this coronavirus to stop and believe me i want it to stop also but we have to get past this storm we have to get through it because after there's going to be a greater reward 
there is nothing negative that happens that we don't learn a lesson from or that we don't grow from. And so for us to pray that the coronavirus just totally stops, don't get me wrong, I know I'm gonna have a lot of comments on this, but for us to pray for God to get us through the storm and not learn anything or not get anything out of it is useless. We have to use this to our advantage and use all those resources that God has given us. And so there may be some people that are gonna need to be put to sleep but that is God's plan. Maybe they won't be able to handle things that are going to happen later in the future. There are people who are going to want to learn more about Jesus because of this and praise God because they're finally going to know about the Savior who loves them and who cares for them, who wants to save them. The bottom line is that this is not a time for us to be scared. Although we are scared, we pray about it. Ask God to give you peace. Ask God to give you wisdom. Ask God to give you a calm heart. Because believe me, I was not like this a couple of months ago. I feel at peace. I know that he's in control and I know that he loves me. And I know that he cannot, he will not give me more than what I can handle. For me and my family, actually I'm more worried about my children, but even they are saved and they are sealed through him. And so if, I, if, I, if I have to go to sleep, I know that God has a greater promise for me, which is the, the resurrection. I'm going to, when I open my eyes, I'm going to see him. The first thing I'm going to see is Jesus Christ. And that is what gives me hope. That is what gives me peace. I'm not going to let the enemy attack my heart and attack my family, attack my home and attack my mind. I know that I am a child of God, that I am loved, that I am cared for. And I hope that you feel that too in this time of crisis. Know that bad things and probably even worse things are going to happen. But we have to hold on to God's promises. And and know that he's got our back, that he's got this, that he's not gonna let us go through all this without taking us to that finish line. I hope this video has given you a little different perspective on fear and where it comes from and how we shouldn't be fearful. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment below things that you do to help you find peace, to help you find calm in the storm, and just some encouraging words for others that may be listening to this video. You can also follow me on Instagram at A Quiet Praise, and please, please, please go ahead and share this with your friends with your family, somebody that you feel really needs it. I pray that you guys stay safe and feel the presence of God in your lives. Till the next time.